Gabby Searcy describes her daughter Gabriella Dixon as her mini-me, but she just hopes wherever her daughter is, she will be fine too. I'm still holding on to faith. Last Tuesday, Searcy says she never got a call or text from her daughter to let her know where she was. When Dixon's kids arrived to her home, she said the two-year-old said something that rattled her. She touched my knees and she said, Mama, Gabby is sleeping in blood. Even when she dropped the babies off to my ex-wife or to me uh, or her sisters, She'll call and check on her babies. Like, Dad, I'm doing this, uh, you know, how my baby's doing. That let me know that something wasn't right, because that's something she don't do. That's totally out of character. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Dixon. I'm 18 years old and a mother to two beautiful girls. I am missing, and no one has seen me since October 30th, 2023. My family is desperately searching for me. I was last seen on the 1900 block of Pine Hills Drive in Macon, Georgia. To understand what may have happened to me, let me go back a few years when I was around the age of 16. I was in a relationship with a boy named Reginald Harris, and he is the father of my two children. He had put his hands on me for the first time, but he apologized and said he snapped and it would never happen again. I did not tell anyone because he was my first real boyfriend my first true love. He would give me gifts because I came from a family that only had enough to make sure we had what we need. He knew that I was the black sheep of my family, so he listened to my problems and always offered me to come run away to his house. He knew that I didn't experience much, so he made sure to introduce me to things so I could always have that first time moment with him. He knew to show me just enough interest in me, not too much to keep me chasing him because he knew I craved attention. He knew I was shy and more introverted, so he encouraged me not to have friends and that we would be each other's friends. He knew I always had a hard time at feeling pretty, so at first he made me feel more beautiful than anyone else ever did in my life. Then he made sure to point out my biggest insecurities. Then he would never compliment me, so I stopped feeling confident and making any effort. He knew to always be charming to my family, and to make sure he always looked like a good young man. He came to church with us faithfully. To every event, he would come over, and he would just sit in the living room and just hang out. And when we had our first child, he didn't leave. So everyone loved him, and he did no wrong. When it started happening more frequently, I didn't really process it. It felt like a dream, like I was one of those wives in a movie. Afterwards, I would think, this can't be happening to me. I'm only a teenager. Maybe if I keep crying and stop fighting back, he'll stop. However, it didn't help that by now he had completely isolated me. So I had no one to vent to about all of this. And he was my only friend. My relationship with my mom wasn't great because I always ran away. He encouraged me to argue with her. And as far as my siblings, he knew that I didn't have a relationship with them. So he took advantage by further dividing us, by forming bonds with them, making me seem like a bad person, just to get advice on how to deal with me. It even got to the point that he was so close to them that they wouldn't even tell me, their blood sister, that he would be cheating at first. He would apologize and love on me, but then he would just stop pretending to feel bad altogether. These are some of the things he would say. I didn't leave bruises, so what proof do you have? After everything I did for you, I've been the one there for you. If you leave me, you're the one that's not going to have anything you're going to be without. And you're over-exaggerating. I didn't barely touch you. And nobody's going to believe you. The girls needed a two-parent house and to get over it. We got kids together. You're going to ruin my life. I have to be there for them. So with that being said, I accepted it. Plus, I didn't have any proof. And I have kids now. And they needed their dad in their life. And I'm already a statistic. I don't want to further hurt them by growing up without a two-parent household and have daddy issues. He's a provider and makes things easier. I can get over temporary pain. That's what I told myself. From there, it started to get worse. From hittings to beatings to chokings to being held at gunpoint with threats, he would say, I'll do you, then I'll do me. Somehow, he managed to never leave bruises. I wanted proof so I could get away from him. He was obsessed. He always showed up to my place. He would use the kids as a pawn to manipulate me. This was very unhealthy and I felt trapped. 
I would cry for my mom, hoping one day she would notice my isolation and try to talk to me about it. But it never happened. No one did. I couldn't blame them, though. I didn't speak up about what was happening. This picture here is the first time he left any kind of proof. This was also the first time I called my mom for help. She came to get me. My eye was swollen for a week. My head was hurting terribly. Any light hurt, and I had blurred vision. I now have a permanent scar on my eyebrow. This is some of the backstory to my incident. It was July 31st, 2023. I tried to move on. I tried to get him to understand that I didn't want to be with him or have nothing to do with him. He waited until I got dropped off, and then as soon as I heard the screeching of tires and a car door slam, I ran. I didn't even attempt to go to my apartment. He chased me down like I was prey and beat me. He parked his car and chased me down again and beat me some more. He even got inside of his car, left, came back, and beat me again, leaving me with a concussion and bleeding. I was wet because it all happened outside. He had taken my phone, and I was knocking on multiple neighbors' doors for help. One finally came out, and I called the police, which did not show up, and also my mom for help. She seemed to be annoyed because it was 4 a.m. My little sister was with her. She didn't even show an ounce of concern. Overall, my whole family now knows. My whole family is still friendly with him. My family doesn't even care, but I am learning to report him. This situation really did it for me. I would make it to the hospital. A nurse who was so nice talked to me and gave me her number if I ever wanted to talk. He got me flowers and a balloon after I left the hospital. He had never given me flowers after he hurt me. That's when I remembered a poem I read and I knew I had to leave. This is the poem. I got flower today. It wasn't my birthday or any special day. We had our first argument last night and he said a lot of cruel things that really hurt. I know that he is sorry and didn't mean to say the things he said because he sent me flowers today. I got flowers today. It wasn't our anniversary or any other special day. Last night, he threw me into a wall and started to choke me. It seemed like a nightmare. I couldn't believe that it was real. I woke up this morning sore and bruised all over. I know he must be sorry because he sent me flowers today. I got flowers today and it wasn't Valentine's Day or any other special day. Last night, he beat me and threatened to kill me. Makeup and long sleeves didn't hide the cuts and bruises this time. I couldn't go to work today because I didn't want anyone to know. But I know he's sorry because he sent me flowers today. I got flowers today. And it wasn't Mother's Day or any other special day. Last night, he beat me again, and it was worse than all of the other times. If I leave him, what will I do? How will I take care of my kids? What about money? I'm afraid of him, but I'm too scared to leave him. But he must be sorry because he sent me flowers today. I got flowers today. Today was a special day. It was the day of my funeral. Last night, he took my life. If I only would have gathered the courage and strength to leave him, I could have received help from the women's shelter, but I didn't ask for their help. So I got flowers today for the last time. Sadly, this may be the case for 18 year old Gabby because she has vanished without a trace. Her family fears the worst and suspects foul play. Gabby's ex Reginald will be picked up by authorities in the first week of November for outstanding warrants. Reginald has four warrants for domestic violence charges but has not been charged in connection with Gabby's disappearance. He is currently being charged with terroristic threats and acts, plus three counts of aggravated assault. The warrants for Reginald stem from two alleged attacks on September 3rd and September 23rd of this year. On September 3rd, Gabby reported that she was driving down Old Clinton Road, headed to a hair appointment for one of her two daughters, when she heard a honk and saw Reginald driving behind her. Gabby said he started to shoot at the car that she was in with their two children and her current boyfriend, and that was according to the warrant report. He would continue to shoot until he got onto Spring Street. While Gabby was on the phone with 911, she said they lost sight of Reginald, but then he called her and told her to pull up to his location. A deputy would then get on the line to try to get him to pull up, and Reginald thought it was the boyfriend in the car speaking. Reginald asked where they were at because he had wrecked his car trying to follow them according to the warrant. Gabby then told him he was going to jail for shooting at them, but Reginald denied shooting at them. 
Gabby then told him he could have shot any bystanders or one of their children. Reginald asked the kids were in there and said she was disrespecting him by having her new boyfriend around his kids, according to the report. Gabby then showed the deputies a series of text messages between herself and Reginald leading up to the alleged shooting. And one of the text messages said, don't be surprised when I knock on the door. Then on September 23rd, Reginald allegedly choked Gabby before pointing a gun at her and threatened to unalive her if she left him. The responding deputies said they saw a pair of bruises on Gabby's neck. The deputies would advise Gabby to get a restraining order at the time, but it does not appear that she ever got one. Gabby's father said he last spoke with his daughter on October 27th after helping her move into a new apartment in Macon. He said that she was really excited about this new place and new start. After Gabby vanished, Reginald would drop the kids off at Gabby's mother's house, and Gabby's two-year-old said she saw mommy laying in blood. And a police report indicated that the child told the police the same thing. It was said the child said that mommy was sleeping, shaking my head. No telling what this baby saw and remembers. Gabby was preparing to enlist in the army and was going to have to leave her children behind for a few months. A video letter to her kids, she would say no matter how far away she was, she would always love them. She was thinking about a better future and wanted to be stable and did not want her kids to struggle for her mistakes. She definitely had a bright future ahead of her. Gabriella definitely seemed to be wise beyond her years for someone so young and to have kids so young. She definitely realized that what she was going through was not the life she wanted to live for her two children. And sadly, even if she would have gotten a protection order, it most likely would have not mattered. I have done multiple stories on women with protection orders whose lives are still taken. See, when someone has a goal to end your life, they don't care about a protection order. It's so unfortunate that more can't be done in these types of situations. And now family is completely shattered and devastated because it's not known where she's at. And most likely, as hard as it is to say, it does not look good. If anyone has any information about Gabby's whereabouts, please contact the local authorities. My deepest thoughts and prayers are with this family as they continue to search. And I pray that Gabby is found soon and brought home. So please comment your thoughts on this situation. Do you think Gabby is still alive? Or do you feel her child's father did the unthinkable? Also, please don't forget to hit the like button to share, to make your people aware. And as always, remember to stay woke. Things change quickly.